get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Wise here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of RX Bar, Einstein Bagels, P90X, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP events and masterminds for top entrepreneurs all over the country, including many events in the e-commerce industry. Rise 25, we hosted events this past year in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Francisco, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, Las Vegas, probably more than I'm missing. Uh, But if you see the value of immersing yourself with top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate to get to the next level, go to Rise 25 and contact us to find out when and where our next event is going to be. I am really excited to talk to today's guest, Kaylee Donawald. She's the co-founder of Sacred Serve. If you look on their website, you will immediately get hungry and your mouth will start to water. They're a Chicago-based company innovating ice cream that's fully organic, raw, vegan gelato made from whole coconuts. Kaylee, I love this. All flavors are dairy-free, vegan, and paleo, and strictly free of gluten, dairy, corn, soy, GMOs, stabilizers, fillers, and preservatives. When I read that, Kaylee, it makes me think this is hard to do because all those things hold stuff together and make it so it doesn't go bad, right? So we'll talk about some of that stuff. Um, They're challenging the conventional route of pint-sized packaging with their super unique looking 10-ounce containers. They are 40 locations across Chicago expanding. Kaylee, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. What What do you find the biggest challenges lately? I guess lately I is a better, a better, better way to frame it because every day is a challenge. Right, every day has challenges. Um, I would say the biggest things for us are logistics. Just getting a frozen product around. Our biggest hope is to go direct to consumer. I really think that that kind of is the future, and we want to connect directly with them and offer that tailored experience that you get from Amazon and all these places now. But for us, the costs of shipping on such a small scale that we're at right now is really hard. You know, you add dry ice in there and then you, right. you put the weight of it on it. It has to be within two days yeah. usually. Um, if not overnight, you can't send it on a plane. So we can't even reach California. Um, so yeah, that is one of our biggest challenges right now is is reaching customers. We have people that are in different states and we just, they're asking for it. We cannot get it to them because we yeah. just don't have the infrastructure in place right now. Yeah. I even think $10 is inexpensive for what you produce. Some people may, I mean, you're comparing it apples and oranges, but I would say anyone should go on sacredserve.com and if you're in Chicago, get it. If you're not, tell someone in Chicago to get it because this is the type of company and product like people should be supporting, in my opinion. And even at $10 price point, these are really really good ingredients and if anyone's made something like this i mean with like you said the packaging and and the you know the transportation it's tough you almost need to sell it in bulk um so hopefully people go out and and get this stuff at um on your site and obviously they can get it in a bunch of grocery stores um it looks like there's a bunch of food smarts um, and then the, the Foxtrot, the market by Foxtrot. Um, so what other challenges do you think, like this is, this is top priority for you over the next six months? Uh, I think really understanding marketing. I think for us, it's, I, I meet a lot of people every day and they're like, oh, I didn't even know that this product exists and mm. I am dairy free. And so it's always tough to hear that we, we have this product even in the Chicago market. The Chicago market's huge and we've only scratched the surface. So before right. we even think about shipping nationally, it's like how do we engage this customer base that is right here? Like we're making it locally. Um, you know, is it Instagram targeted ads? Is it yeah. direct marketing? You know, like email marketing, what is it that's not 
we don't have that background. So right yeah. now it's kind of us reaching out and, and leveraging some people in our network to try and understand how do we engage this market that we're in. Um, we just don't have that reach yet. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think who I listen to are the influencers, right? Mm -hmm. Health influencers is specifically in Chicago. Maybe it's other founders who have a similar mission. Um, yeah. Like um, I Heart Quinoa founders I talk to yeah. there. I don't know if you know yeah. them. I do. Yeah. We, um, we've done a bunch of stuff with them. They're great. Yeah. Natalie, who's on their social media, we've, we've been working with her a little bit. Yeah. Um, what's, I want to hear, you know, as you're on this journey, it's like a roller coaster pretty much every day. Um, what's some of the best advice you received and what's some of the worst advice? You don't have to say who gave you the worst advice, but <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the worst advice, I mean, maybe it seemed like good advice at the time and the people are well intentioned. They're not meaning to give you bad advice, right. but just wasn't good. Um, I think some of the best advice we've, we've received is stick with, stick with what you're doing and get really good at one thing. Because when we started this, you know, my partners are very creative and have this big raw food chef background. And there's a lot of things that we can make, you know, we can make dairy-free coconut yogurt, coconut kefir, coconut jerky, all these products are just at our disposal. We already know how to make them, but that would be spreading ourselves way too thin. So the best advice I think we've gotten is just get super good at one thing and kind of own that and be that. And that's, we've redirected ourselves back mm. to focus on just ice cream right now. Like, let's get really good at that. So before I ask about worst advice, what's the most enticing product like you're staying focused on on the gelato, right? But what's been the most enticing? Like, oh, I, this would be great if we just ran with it. What's, yeah. what's second on the list? The second on the list is our coconut meat itself. So that is not a product that I've really seen in the market, and we it's at our fingertips. You know, like we're using it every day to make our ice cream, and so I would love to also sell that product and then supply people with recipes. You know, like here, make our ice cream at home and buy our product to do so. So it feels like this low-hanging fruit. It's also frozen. It's the same distribution channel, mm. but again, it is it is a sidestep. It is how do we make the packaging for that? Now we're marketing right. this. Now we're supporting that with recipes, and and it's a it's a slightly different thing, and so. It may come in the future, but um, yeah, for now we're. I totally we're see that. Yeah, I totally see that because as you were talking about, it, I'm like, hmm, what could I do with that coconut meat? Because it seems right. like smoothies and everything. And I mean, that's I think in entrepreneurship, that's kind of the tough thing is that there's always attractive and enticing opportunities yeah. left and right, whether it's working with someone or a new product to put out there, whatever it is. And it's it's really tough to kind of hone in on one thing, but. Yeah. Um, it makes me think of Kaylee when you say that the sambazon, the acai, the frozen uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. It totally exactly. makes me think of that. I'd love to throw the froze because I just bought that the frozen yeah. uh, sambazon packs with the frozen, you know, sacred sort of coconut meat and make some right. kind of something concoction. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll come yeah. to your location and buy it. Then will you sell it to me? Great. Yes, absolutely. You will. Okay. Good. Maybe it's just pickup only. So you pick don't have, only, yeah. you don't it's have to drive it. Pick only scene. Yeah. So worst advice, what's been worst worst advice you've received? Worst advice. You know, I don't even know if there's one thing I can think of. I think a or lot of people Or maybe biggest mistake. It could be biggest mistake that maybe you reverse time. Um I would say biggest mistake is bringing people on too early. I think like we were talking about, there's a lot of opportunities all over the place. And, you know, I see the vision of this company and I want it to grow and I believe in it so much. And when people come to us and they want to fulfill a role and they say, Hey, I want to help out with this. You don't want to turn them away. They love the mission. Right. But what, but what we found is like, we're so we're bootstrapping this whole operation. We cannot afford to bring someone else on. So even while it might help us for a little bit, it's really just, we can't pay anyone. Like we can't pay for all these side th things, even though it sounds like it's helping us to drive forward. It's really just we have to remember that we're so small, and we're so new. We have to do everything. We're doing everything ourselves right now. So, yeah, that is the tough thing is to turn opportunities down right now with the understanding that we're just not there yet. 
Yeah. Um, I always ask this, Kaylee, is at the end, and first of all, everyone should check out sacredserve.com and get some. And um, two things. One, what's been a low moment? And then a flip side, what's been a proud moment so far? All right, let's see. A low moment would be... Besides today, when you have to... (laughs) I think a low moment is... um financial financial restrictions i think that starting a food and beverage business is just extremely capital intensive you've got to build out these kitchens and all this equipment and all these ingredients up front and all the time and labor involved in making this product that is perishable and keeping it safe and getting it out there so you know you feel that strain every single day like are we going to make enough sales to keep going can we keep affording these ingredients Mm. so Overall, I would say the low moments, the ones that I can really recall the most are really just being stressed, thinking we're going to run out of money and yeah. how do we, how do we keep moving forward? Um, I guess, the, you know, on the bright side, you, you know, if, uh, you can eat the product so you won't starve, right? Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it's healthy. So like I'll always be in good <laughs> um, What about a proud moment? Um, I would say a proud moment was signing on with our first distributor. I think that that is kind of a, one of the big steps that we've been working toward for a long time, and it kind of just cements that we're still moving forward, um, and this product is going to grow, and people are seeing the vision. You know, these big companies, they pick and choose who they want to work with, and so to kind of have the support of someone that's been in the industry for so long saying, yeah, we see this product, we want to help move it, uh, we think it would be a good fit, uh, is a really good feeling. And I think another big proud moment is that we've done a couple vegan specific events and we have lines that are like 50 people deep and we sell out. And for us, that's just the best is seeing Amazing. customers who are like, yeah, I tried you here. I tried you here. And I, I came today because of you guys. And just people waiting in line for 20 minutes in general to get some of our product is just a crazy, crazy feeling. Yeah. Well, Kaylee, I want to be the first one to say thank you so much. You know, everyone listening to this can say we knew you when and we knew Sacred Serve when. (laughs) Um, Everyone should check out sacredserve.com. And um, thanks again. Thanks for having me. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.